Rocks go. Go. LD is go. MD. MD is go. LD verify go to initiate terminal count. LC, you are go to initiate terminal count. Copy. Houston, you are go for TLI. Over. Welcome back. We're on episode seven, and in our last episode, we had Boots on Duna for the first time. And this episode and multiple of the future episodes are going to be devoted to setting up a long-term base and outpost there. This launch is carrying the second of two parts for a new spacecraft that we're going to need to help build up the planet and add a lot of infrastructure onto the surface. This ship is going to be one of the first successful booster recoveries that I've been able to carry out. My AJ270 booster has been really, really effective. It's very cheap, it's very powerful, but it gets expended every time because it runs out of fuel during the flight. So in this flight, I outfitted it with a lot of parachutes to be able to bring it back successfully. Reuse in my space program is basically a secondary objective. I don't consider it essential to actually building up any of the other places. I just find it as a good cost saving measure. A lot of the company contracts in my career save have been lucrative enough and I've been able to use my existing assets well enough to avoid having to use it. But when I can get away with it, I try to pull a little bit of reusability in the launchers. Axum is going to be bringing two cargo habitats for the surface over to Duna. It's going to also disconnect and be its own interplanetary ship afterwards. So this is using one contract to build up to having a long-term capability in this ship. Next up, we're going to need a way to get things on and off world, and for this, we're going to use a real NASA concept called Hercules. Hercules is kind of the precursor, and in my opinion, a slightly cooler version of what we have in Starship now, where it is able to do sorties from the surface and deliver cargo to the surface of Mars. In reality, Hercules is only 5 meters in diameter, and it's a lot more specialized. Mine, I ended up building as the upper stage and transfer vehicle for this mission. My Hercules is financed via a contract to deliver ore to Ike. So we're going to use this vehicle to link up with a refinery and pull tons of ore and deliver that to the surface of Ike. To extract that much ore, we're going to need a whole new breed of refinery. So this is a new prototype vehicle that we're launching to Minmus for the outpost and we're going to test out the design and how fast it can actually turn over in situ resource utilization. This bad boy can pump out a ton of liquid hydrogen from the surface and fill the existing tanker that we have so that we can build up and fuel our fleet of interplanetary spacecraft. As a part of this, we're sending the tanker up to Tycho to deliver a large amount of fuel, and then an extension here is bolted onto the front so that we can carry more liquid hydrogen to support ops at Duna.
The design of the landers is based on the Constellation program roughly, as well as the CONOP for being able to bring it in and land it on the surface. Shortly after the arrival of the refinery, Axum arrives at our exploration outpost around Duna. The propulsion unit for Chetsamoka has to also travel out to grab this tanker, and from there we're able to add a lot more liquid hydrogen to our reserve here and run a lot more missions. This will allow us to fly back to Kerbin and kind of complete this circular trade route that we've established. But at this point, it's time to start adding some infrastructure to the surface. A little visual glitch there from the refinery made the engines actually be on for some reason, but not actually produce any thrust. Hercules has already landed at this point, and it's time for Axum to deorbit and then reorbit. Each time it does this, it effectively makes itself suborbital, and then it has to accelerate away from that. And it's a real tricky thing to get the landing just right. After nearly two years in flight, the Jewel spacecraft begins to arrive with its lander in tow. As we begin to enter the system, we start taking measurements and get ready to drop the lathe lander. Uh, this spaceship is going to drop the lander and then pass by, and it's going to act as a relay to be able to communicate between the lander and ground control. The lander will enter the atmosphere and then will be able to take science measurements for a limited time, kind of similar to the Cassini-Huygens probe. Chet is going to be tasked with retrieving a large cargo shipment for the next round of machinery to help us colonize the surface.
So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this has been a long time in the making. I actually recorded a lot of this back in March timeframe of this year. So it's, uh, it's been a lot to actually sift through what I used to have and reassemble it into a coherent story. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, there should be more model rocketry stuff coming in the really, really near future now that I'm starting to get my shop set back up. And uh, I can't wait to uh, see you in the next one.